It was tattered and soiled, weak and shabby, hardly a thing of glorious beauty. And yet in 1995, when John E. Craver donated it to the Scottish Rite Museum in Lexington, Massachusetts, they wanted to show it off. The old flag's 15 stars tell us that it probably was stitched together in the same period as the most famous of all American flags. The one that, during the War of 1812, flew over Baltimore's Fort McHenry during a brutal bombardment. And the next morning was still flying in the dawn's early light. The flag that inspired Francis Scott Key to write the Star Spangled Banner. The Freemason's old flag needed a lot of loving care. Over the next two years, conservators would devote some 500 hours to preserving it and preparing it for display. All this because the Scottish Rite Masons felt proud and protective of a bedraggled patchwork of red, white, and blue. Whether historic or commonplace, old or new, the flag and all it stands for never fail to evoke powerful responses. We parade it, we sing to it, we raise it in the morning, take it down at night. When we display the flag, what are we saying? When soldiers are killed at war, a flag is draped over the coffin as they come home. And so the flag has this very powerful significance in terms of the life and death and the, and the spirituality of military service. By the late 19th century, American businessmen were finding other uses for the flag. For example, handkerchiefs. There were certain groups who said, this is appalling. You know, here's the national color, and you're asking somebody to blow their nose on it. Um, these businesses were being greedy hucksters, and, and they were criticized for not being an American in fact or spirit. What do you think? Expression of patriotic pride or a blatant stab at using the stars and stripes as an attention grabber for this business? There are federal laws regarding U.S. flags. This is the standard American flag. This isn't. We are allowed to fly our colors. There is no doubting Rodriguez's patriotism, but these have to go by this weekend, or Montclair will start fining Rodriguez. It's funny that a, a part of our government would go after us for flying the colors. Regardless of the reason the banners are here, Rodriguez says they're not coming down. He told me he's willing to go to jail over this. Then there's show business. One of the most audacious, some would say shameless, of showbiz flag wavers was song and dance man George M. Cohan. The 1942 Warner Brothers biopic hyped Cohan's flag waving as only Hollywood could. Of course, politicians also love to love the flag. Early in World War II, when American troops were suffering defeat after defeat in Europe and the Pacific, a magazine executive got the idea to raise morale with a show of national solidarity. He called his campaign, United We Stand. But with all the exposure of the flag, how do we make sure it isn't harmed? Or do we? We didn't get an official flag code until 1942.
What about very provocative, even destructive displays of the flag? What is the right balance between respect for the flag and protection of free speech? The debate rages on. Burning or desecrating the flag in other ways is a despicable act. But the First Amendment protects not only speech we admire, but also speech we abhor. Why do certain photographs of the flag stick in our memories? The battle for Iwo Jima was the costliest in Marine Corps history. Of the 6,821 Americans who died in the battle, almost 6,000 of them were Marines. Joe Rosenthal, a photographer, did not know that he was taking what would be the most reproduced image of the 20th century. Had no clue. And there's a sense of people working together to, to raise an American future. This is an iconic moment in American history. And the flag planting was the pinnacle of that iconic moment. Prior to the Apollo 11 moon landing, the U.S. had agreed to a United Nations treaty that prohibited its signatories from claiming ownership of the moon and other celestial bodies. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin said that as he looked at the flag, he sensed an almost mystical unification of all people in the world. The flag in the famous Ground Zero photo is not only a national icon, it's also a national mystery. The flag in the photo measures three feet by five feet, but the 9-11 flag that later was raised at New York City Hall, flown at Yankee Stadium, and at one time was destined for the Smithsonian, measures five by eight feet. How did the flags get switched, and who switched them? Time for a pop quiz. Who designed the first flag? If you said Betsy Ross, sorry, you're wrong. Turns out it was likely Francis Hopkinson, a member of the Continental Congress. Since then, many others have designed our flags, which have had quite an evolution. Yeah, Betsy Ross is boss. The flag has made appearances in works by hundreds, if not thousands, of artists. Faith Ringgold painted her first flag in the 1960s, a time of political and social upheaval. I remember I was teaching in the 60s, and uh... I would rush home from school to hear what had happened that day. Actually, I was inspired. You don't have to say a lot when you show that red, white, and blue. You got the stars and the stripes. It's a wonderful uh, composition. We have to claim it for the right purposes so that it can live up to its promise. America wouldn't be what it is without the promise. Is the flag truly everyone's flag? At various times in our history, one group or another has claimed it as its own. For the first third of our history, from 1777 until 1861, it was almost unheard of for individual Americans to fly the flag. And you know, it was April of 1861 when the Civil War started. When the flag was taken down at Fort Sumter, it rose up in the north. It was the moment at which the flag was kind of called into question. Here the flag was supposed to symbolize the whole country, and yet it was a military symbol of the North. But the suffragists used the flag in a very, very specific way. They wanted their protests to be beautiful. 
And so they would dress all in white, and they'd have these gorgeous sashes, and they wore these lovely hats of the era, and they brought flags. And the flag was very much part of this pageant, and it was also a claim, a stake into the American dream. In pursuit of that dream, wave upon wave of immigrants have come to America. When, as new citizens, they pledge allegiance to the flag, they are voicing its symbolic promise of fraternity and equality. Some immigrants have adopted the American flag as a very particular, very personal symbol. This is the flag of freedom to me. It was given to me by a soldier when we were walking out of Dachau means a lot to me. It is a piece of cloth, but it is freedom. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the Stars and Stripes forever. Star Spangled Banner, you can call me Old Glory, but let's just keep it simple. Uh, just call me Flag. <laughs> oh, oh, say, can you see? Okay. <laughs> Still flag humor. <laughs> yeah, you see, you can't recognize me because... I'm in my birthday suit, yes! I'm wearing the original 13 here. Yeah. I remember Miss Betsy sitting there going, Oh, this could be the start of something big. Oh. <laughs> I was born June 14th, 1777. That makes me a Gemini. <laughs> you know, people say, Flag, how do you stay so young? Is it jogging? No. Is it tennis? No. It's waving. <laughs> yeah, but it hasn't always been easy for me, though. I had a tough puberty. <laughs> yeah, war, famine, invasion. And 1861, well, I had a little skin problem that broke out into 34 stars. But now, well, a little patience, and look what we got now. Look at this. Hold on here. Ha-ha! Ha-ha! Oh, 60! Everybody's on here. Look at this. Alaska. Yeah, we got your Tennessee. How are you doing today? Here's Vermont. You can't get there from here. And there's California. For sure, totally. <laughs> like I said before, you know, I, I had a tough time for a while. I've been in a lot of wars. They fired missiles and muskets at me, but you know, come the dawn's early light, I'm still there. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but people haven't always been respectful to me. Sometimes it's been tough. There have been some people try and spit on me, trample me, burn me. Foreigners and occasionally some Americans too, but I don't let it get me down because I'm not a stay-at-home kind of flag. You know, I've been to Europe. I've been to both North and South Pole. I was at Iwo Jima. Recently, I've even been to the moon. I haven't been getting out much lately. I guess it's not very chic to put up the flag anymore, you know? Look at it this way. Don't look at it as saluting me. Look at it as saluting yourselves. You know, hey, I'm just a flag, a symbol. You're the people, if I may say so from here, long may you wave. 